All right, what's going on, traders? Jamie Setley here. We're getting started. Um, Gary, I see your question. Not sure if you're live yet. I have no sound. Well, I am live now. So, uh, can you hear me? Gary, can you hear me? Test, test, test. Yep, sounds good now. Okay, great. So, uh, we're going to start with the U.S. dollar. Looked at this yesterday. Um, five waves down, I think. Okay. And we came right, right into the 618 retrace of the rally from uh, the March 9 low to the March 19 high. And we are looking for a bounce. So I'm looking for a bounce back towards essentially 12,692. Um, you know, a lot of people will look at the, say the 618 and look for a rally to there, which I guess could happen because you've also got the low here from uh, the 20th. But for me, 12,692 is a better spot because of the parallel uh, former fourth wave high, but the parallel's big here. So if we just look at it daily and scroll back, I mean, you know, this is pretty key. I mean, look at this thing's been support slash resistance, um, you know, for a really long time, especially since October of 2018, but really all the way back to September of 2017. So that is what I'm looking at for US dollar. Um, so generally, generally speaking, broadly speaking, next few days into next week, kind of thinking that we go, you know, lean towards kind of a bounce in the dollar, right? And then, um, and then, and then, and then lower. So let's take a look at the components of U.S. dollar. So. Euro is one, of course. Euro, we've been following the channel um, that is back to the Jan 2019 uh, high. And Euro is probably actually my like least favorite setup at this point. Okay. Um, so, you know, this ABC my guess is it's not going to hold because one, the, the US dollar chart is pretty clean. So my thinking might be actually that we go more like this and then actually drop down here. Okay. Um, in that instance, you know, one of the tricks, right, that I like to employ is daily reversal support. So you take the low day which in this case is, is actually the 23rd and put a, 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 you know, a horizontal line on the close. So that's going to be 107.27. Hold on here. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so that's gonna be 107.27. So that's a level that I'm gonna watch for support in Euro is 107.27. Um, pound chart, I love the pound chart. And we looked at this one two days ago. I'm not really willing to short, I'm not willing to short cable here. Um, even though you do have the five up, unless we start to get up here and fail a little bit. Reason is you're still in a pretty solid uptrend that's defended with support by the parallel that extends off this March 20th high. That was against support on April 6th. Remember, we were thinking that you come back and try for that level and we were gonna try to buy it on this parallel um, last week, but we just never got triggered, okay? Um, and still we haven't even met kind of the levels that I think that I was thinking we'd get to anyway. Cable's been relatively strong. so not really willing to try a short here. Um, but eventually, you're probably going to be thinking bigger support 
per cable. And another thing that I mentioned on uh, two days ago and I wrote about pound was the pitchfork. So if we just, if you take, uh, use your three pivot, September low, December high, March low, okay, you can see what's happened. We nailed that median line, like to the tick, it was perfect, right? So that is when you when you hit respond to a market like that uh, or to a median line like that, when a market responds to a median line like that, it su suggests that you do have uh, something to work with in the structure, okay? Um, now, naturally, the first level you wanna look at is the 25 line, okay? And it would have been better if we would have had kind of, you know, respect that on the upside or when we were rallying and try to, you know, bang against it and pull back, pull back, pull back. But you still have to want, you still got to watch that level um, if we, if we get down to it. So, um, you know, big area up here, not really willing to short it, but also not trying to buy it into this level either. Dollar yen. Markets are so odd right now. I mean, like dollar yen lower, but like look at today. Um, equities are risk on, you know, all day, especially, at, you know, after that announcement, after the cash close yesterday. Um, and then, yeah, Gary, abomination. Right. So equities are risk on all day. And then you've got gold, which, you know, tanks. Um, you would th any other time in history probably you'd think that you would get a little more of a pop in dollar yen right we've been looking at kind of wanting to sell 108 30 50 and this thing just dies didn't do anything all day nothing i mean it's odd so you know haven't changed my mind on wanting to short kind of that 108 30 108 50 area um and then next focus on the downside is the 105.05.20 level, right? 105.05, right? You can see back to August, okay? Clear level here, gap below, clear support here, 6.18 of the move up. So uh, yeah, it's a big spot. And, um, you know, I'm targeting that area, but entry-wise, you know, two legs up, 108.30, um, the 108.50 area, a level that we've talked about for a while, you know, you can see right here, one, really starting back in January of 2019 is kind of when 108.50 started to establish itself, establish itself as something important, right? As support, you kind of consolidated on it here. And then really since uh, September, it's been a clear dividing line, right? So bearish beneath. So bearish beneath and looking towards 105.05.20. Sir, so can we add gold, silver, and copper? Absolutely. We'll we will look at gold, silver, and copper. Okay, Aussie. Um, you know my sentiment here, right? Great spot to short based mostly on the fact that you've hit the center line that goes back to the 2011 high, right? I suppose if we got a little more of a pop next week then 6480 would be the level. Um, I did talk about, um, Kiwi yesterday, maybe being a better short actually than Aussie because it's just been acting weaker. So last night, essentially after that um, announcement yesterday by Gilead or whatever, um, after the cash closed, you had this move here, that four hour bar, you see the spike right there? And that was essentially the day, like nothing happened the rest of the day. Um, so be looking for you know, this to roll over, but again, it's kind of, you know, the, 
it's just firm. We haven't really done anything. And Kiwi is a better short, in my opinion. So, and Dollar Cat's a better long than, than Aussies are short. So here is that Kiwi chart. All right. So five waves up from the low. Okay. Um, and I always say, you know, look at closes, hourly closes. That's how Elliot himself counted them. You can see one up, flat two, three, four. You can see four and one do not overlap on an hourly closing basis, five. And this is probably wave A, probably wave B, bulk of it done today, and looking for C wave lower. Also, with Aussie relatively close to those highs from right here, it's totally possible that we get one of those divergences next week, right? So maybe like pop up above the April uh, 14th high in Aussie hit that trend line at 64.85, but yet Kiwi will not end up taking out the high, right? So key, I go in next week with really with, you know, kind of wanting, wanting to short Kiwi. 618 was hit today, uh, two equal legs up might be the level that you want. And that's gonna be 6071 which is going to be that high as well and right up here. So really heading to next week, 60, 70 looks like a great short for Kiwi. All right, dollar CAD. I love this on the long side. Had a standing order to buy it today at 39.85. Didn't trigger again after yesterday's announcement. Um, market pretty much just kind of did nothing and died, but might get a better entry next week. Let's see what two equal legs here would be. So two equal, two equal legs here is going to be 39.40. So that might be the spot at which we want to be buying. Dollar CAD next week. I do think that you're going to have good resistance up at um, up at 43.30, uh, 43.57. Okay. So 618 of this drop is going to be 43.57. That high right there is going to be 43.49. And if I threw up, say, a weekly chart, high week close is the high week right there, right? Put on a 43.36, okay? So, might be getting a really solid uh, entry next week, 39.40, and you know, relatively tight stop, looking for a 43, 30, 60, something like that. Huge in terms of um, in terms of reward to risk on that dollar cat move. I also noted yesterday that what we could have here is a leading diagonal, right? And this is a one, two, three, four, five. This would be A, B, and a higher in C. The reason I, I, I explained that I was kind of hesitant to label it as such because they're relatively, they're pretty rare. Um, so this would be your you know, your your diagonal labeling. So a leading diagonal, people are quite familiar with ending diagonals, right? Leading diagonals are pretty rare. So I did not uh, label it as such, but we'll see, you know, if we get a clear ABC up and start to roll over, then maybe we'll, maybe we'll roll with it. I mean, it would make sense from the, uh, patterns that we see in you know kiwi for one which is a clean five up uh pound is a clean five up 
um, even dollar yen, and obviously the US dollar index, um, even though CAD is not in that. And I'm speaking of USDOLLAR. Okay, let's go to metals, and then we will uh, finish up with S&P, NASDAQ, and Dow. All right, so here's gold. Um, so first, the grand picture, right? Channel from Life of Gold channel. So we've hit a giant level uh, noted last or sometime this week. It was right on the high, actually, that we had a volume reversal. And you can see that on the four hour chart right here, right? Had some pretty good signals on this of late. Your long short. So where from here? Well, look, gold to me is it's just it's hit, it's hit a huge level, like it's bearish. That's all it is, right? It's just look lower. That's all I'm saying. Um, you know, near term, I was just talking with somebody about gold, actually. Near term, if I just pull up a daily chart, you know, you can see where some of the clear levels are. I mean, you know, just throw kind of, you know, look at this, you know, 17 or 1670, 72, you know, you get a couple highs there, a couple lows there. That's going to be a, a near term level. Maybe you bounce from there. My guess is that resistance is probably going to be 1724 or so, 1720, 24, because that's old support, you know. So those levels, uh, but, you know, really I'm looking towards 1613 initially. 50 days just above there, but that 1613 right here is the Jan, uh, Jan 8th high, um, really January high, so kind of, you know, opening monthly opening month range for the year high and another reason to suspect that's a level is if i pull in my volume charts you can see 2020 vwap is going to be around there because that level right there is 1612 now so um maybe you bounce after 1670 or something you know kind of flush out these lows stop run run up to 1720 24 but then i'd be looking lower towards 1612 okay I still also believe that <clears throat> Gary says, why do I look at gold futures and not spot gold? Um, I'm just used to trading gold futures. Uh, I will be trading some spot gold here though soon. So for maybe I can change the symbols. Um, I also obviously look at futures here because I have volume here, but if I were to pull up spot gold Let's see here i also don't have data that far back like it only goes back to 2006 so i wouldn't even have this um this channel Yeah, so whatever, bottom line is, let's see, well, what, what are we, 1694? So let's say here, Gary, if I looked at the equivalent levels for spot gold, so this is Oanda. Yeah, the levels are a little different, aren't they? It's weird. Why is this chart so different? Spot gold. Hold on. It's like you don't have 
that the, these levels on uh, futures. So anyway, bottom line is just know right now, spot gold's trading about a $10 discount um, to futures, to front months. So 1724 is really going to be 1714 is going to be your equivalent resistance in spot and 1672 your equivalent level is going to be like 1662 okay all right silver i think that silver is in a bearish position i mean love this right here huge long-term parallel and then if i zoom in on that look at this week's action right look at this week's action action on a weekly bar a weekly candle so 1536 is where we're trading right now if i were to look at spot it's 1520 so you're trading a 16 cent um discount on spot Near term, I would just look at this low down here from uh, yesterday or Thursday, at 1435, because it's also support over here. That's probably a level where maybe you stabilize a little bit. Um, or sorry, that's a weekly chart, but that's that's the level. Last week's low is the level. So on XAG, that's going to be four, about 1423.40. Okay. And if I were to pull up with the silver. And that makes sense, actually, because VWAP off of the uh, the low here was 1440. And what we say it was trading at about a 15 cent discount. So that would get you right to about, you know, 1426, something like that. So. That does make some sense to me. Okay, copper. Oops, sorry, lost sound for a second. So copper, we're just following this fork on the way up. Um, frankly, I th thought that we kind of would have been there by now. Uh, it's really, it's kind of a slow moving uh, trade, but that red line up there, that's the 2008-2016 line. And because I know that, what's the copper CFD? XCU. So 234.19. So the chart, the chart's pretty much the same, actually. 234.19 is where the uh, SOT's trading. 234.55. Okay, so you got a little bit of a difference there. 36. Uh, 36 points. So in any case, on copper, 248.20 to slightly higher, 251.55 is kind of where I'm looking. And this is, you know, this is, again, this is an hourly chart. See how great it follows the 200 hour average, by the way. Um, but going back, in, or if I zoom out, right, you can see the 2008, 2016 line, which was also support right here before the break. So it would make sense if we got up to that level um, and then at least had a pullback or a test, okay? You know, I don't know if we're gonna hold, continue to hold this uh, shift four, but as long as we do, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm constructive here. 
All right, let's go to indices. Actually going to start, we're going to go here first. All right, so NASDAQ futures um, took out pretty much everything. Even 2020 V WAP, and we continue to just ride the short-term channel. Um, yes, I am frankly somewhat stunned at the snap back uh, that we've seen. I mean, you know, everything's decoupled. I mean, you know, like you, you pull up, say, a chart of five-year break-evens, crude oil. S&P futures, net, whatever, you know, stocks, and then everything tanked on the way down, and then stocks went straight up, and crude oil had a spike, and then went back down. So it's like everyone, the retest everyone was looking for was in the, was in the wrong market, I guess. Um, so yeah, nothing changes here for me. Like you know, today was nothing. Um, you know, was hoping we'd get that 76 re or that 76 tag. Didn't get it. You know, it, you're constructive, I guess, as long as you're within this channel is all I can really add. I mean, 83, you know, 30s is huge, right? That's VWAP from the high, which, by the way, was resistance before. It was resistance again over here. So you'd watch it for support. It's also those trend lines that we followed, you know, for so long, um, you know, off the highs from 2018, 19 lows from June, uh, August, October last year. Everything clusters right there, okay? So that's gonna be your huge test um, next week at some point if we get there. And my guess is that it's probably a, a level to actually buy on a near-term basis, but if you break it, that would be an indicator of behavior change uh, to the bear side, okay? S&Ps. This is a shift fork, right? Rather than a regular channel, so it's not as steep. Uh, continuing to focus on it, continuing to watch it. You can see we pretty much found, we found support right on the center line uh, today, right? Um, 618 and 2020 VWAP, which is this line here, are gonna be 20, 29, 23, 43 at the moment, okay? So that's a huge test. Um, that's where I'll be watching for, you know, something to happen if we get there. It lines up with the parallel that this, was it 2697? Right there, that high, that low, right? That would line up kind of with your lower parallel of this shift fork um, kind of mid next week. And if you were able to break that, then you could have a near term behavior change. Until then, kind of looking for resistance up here. Levels to know 29, 23, 43. If you do something there, you got a bear set up down into 2697, and then you got to see. The Dow, which played some catch up today, here's Dow futures. You can see Dow futures actually um, continuing to kind of levitate within the short-term channel. So short-term channel, we actually held it. Uh, this was yesterday right here. And this big, huge surge yesterday, uh, recall, was on the Gilead thing. We are at VWAP from the high at the moment, um, you know, Given S and P or given S and P and given Nasdaq, both those futures look like their resistance is a little bit higher. 
So I don't think that we are gonna just roll over right here, but two legs up is 24,960 or so. That's a level to know. It's gonna be right here too. Uh, those are highs from 310, 311. So that's a spot to watch. Six one eight is there as well. That's great. Love it. Mm. Yeah, it's tough. It looks like the biggest level on a measurement basis. It's going to be, you can see two legs up is 24,959. Uh, 618 is 25,081. Um, those highs right there, right? So that's a big spot. It's also the low over here from uh, August of last year. So, wow, yeah, huge spot up there for the Dow. All right, that's it for me. I'm gonna get this archived. So I know uh, some of you guys came in a little late. That's fine. You can watch it while you quarantine yourself uh, and social distance yourself or whatever, but um, stay safe and I will talk to you guys later. All right, so have a good weekend. Again, be safe out there. Um, and uh, I'll talk to you next week. All right, take care. Bye.